Greetings, friends. It's Monday, August 1st. It's Chapo Trap House coming through with you. And joining us today is our good friend, host of the True and On radio program podcast. It's Brace Belden. And I, I got to say right off the bat, Brace, congratulations on being named Lockheed Martin's Employee of the Month. Let's give it up for Brace, everybody. You know, there's very few companies Thank that were willing to take a chance, you know, on a, on a veteran like Brace. But, you know, Lockheed Martin, they were the one that stepped up. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, I've been just, a, just kind of like a design modern guy my whole life. And it's just, it, I'm thrilled to be recognized. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you, uh, you were the uh, Lockheed Martin Employee of the Month. And you're also the inspiration behind everyone's favorite webcomic, Mom Life. Mm -hmm. you're, you're eating those peaches every fucking day. You're eating them in front of the kids as they're crying. Well, I, you know, I started drawing those things just to like imagine not only what it like to be, what would it be like to be married and have a kid, but what it would be like to be a woman in that position. And I, I mean, I'm just thrilled that a lot of people have have recognized that. You're being recognized more and more for all, all the good work you're doing, Brace. But we didn't want to have you on today to talk about your work for um, web comics or defense contractors. We wanted to have you on today to talk about. Um, just like sort of a development in the left political sphere. I mean, a lot of a lot of times people talk to us. They're like, "Oh, where's the left going? What do we do? What, what organizations out there are worth supporting?" And today, I'd like to talk about you know one salutary organization that I think has done a lot of good work, or at least they're trying. And I'm referring to the uh, recent developments in the long percolating saga of the Black Hammer organization and their leader, the man known only as Commander Ghazi. That's yeah. It, this has been these past two weeks have been some of the most thrilling as a longtime hammerhead. Yeah, you were watching the, the like live streams and stuff where they were doing their uh, struggle sessions, right? Like, dude, I've I've not only watched basically all of their live streams. I've watched. I mean, I've long time watching Gazi's just YouTube videos. I've also watched the Reparations Core Twitch streams where they played Warzone and talked about. I know it's they're all white members who have just numbers instead of names uh, who talk about <laughs> <laughs> the need for reparations and things like that. I was one. I was at one point the only viewer of that channel. Um, and it's just, you know, it's 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 I'm so glad to kind of see this work come full circle. I like the idea that playing Warzone is a punishment for slavery and being yeah. a settler. <laughs> yes. Um, but Brace, I guess like uh, let's go through like I mean, what what are the most recent revelations in the Black Hammer saga, and then let's get into like what what is the Black Hammer organization, uh, what is their ideology, and then what what can we do to help? So Black Hammer, I, I, you know, if if you spent any time looking at insane people on the internet, which is easy to do, in fact, it's almost unavoidable. Black Hammer has kind of like made the rounds a few times, uh, you know, notably for started in Hammer City in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, they, they were famously uh, pilloried for calling Anne Frank a Becky. And, um, <laughs> and a colonizer, I believe. And a, co and, and a colonizer, yeah. And then sort of trying to justify it by being like, well, her dad was in the army in the First World War uh, as a conscript. Um, and then, uh, you know, most recently after Hammer City, you know, didn't exactly work out, uh, they moved to Atlanta and then started going even more insane, started a war against former members, moved kind of from house to house where everyone lived together. And then very recently, I, I guess like about seven or eight days ago, were raided by the police after someone in the house called the police and uh, in hush, like hushed, whispered tones said like being held against my will. The police come. A member uh, appears to have killed themselves, and uh, then Ghazi is arrested. Although Ghazi is saying that the member was killed by the FBI, it seems un unlikely that that happened. Um, although who knows? And uh, Ghazi was arrested on a, a litany of charges, including forced sodomy and. Um, which I guess is is just a it's a it's a way to charge someone with rape in Georgia, kidnapping, uh, I think false imprisonment, a, a a raft of charges, and then a few days later they were they weren't named, but it was very clear that they were part of an FBI indictment against a Russian national named Alexander Ionov, uh, who was who was charged with being I guess an unregistered agent of the Russian government and funding 
Black Hammer and a couple of other um, other groups, one of whom is about as insane as Black Hammer and the other whom uh, is, you know, sort of an older group, also pretty nuts, uh, named uh, African People's Socialist Party. We we um we were talking before the episode about how um with Ivanov we we actually knew about this because Ghazi yeah. openly posted on Facebook about this like about two years ago. Um, I love my Russian daddy who's yes. giving me money, <laughs> and um, so we knew that was that was going on. Um, I mean, yeah, like we said, I don't think the DOJ would lie about it, but it's just like. You know, you kind of wonder what the Russians were hoping to accomplish here, if anything. Yeah, uh, they were hoping to start a city in Colorado, Felix, that would be a beachhead for their invasion of the rest of the country. Yeah, they were hoping to start an all-white war zone stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, this so shit that's, accomplished. That's, that's kind of the craziest thing, right? Is because, like, you know, Ionov is, is, you know, he is, I mean, he's still active on Facebook. In fact, he's very active on Facebook. I encourage people to, to look him up. You know, he is. I got to say, he's a ball and a pimp. Um, you know, he fucking looks cool. Big cigars, seven feet tall, no. constantly traveling the world, an entrepreneur, sick watches, many pictures in a Rolls Royce that he clearly does not own, which is actually more baller than owning one. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because it's a waste of money. But uh, he, uh, you know, he's sort of, he, he's the head of this thing called the anti-globalization movement of Russia which basically seems to be a weird, like, political movement, NGO thing. Uh, Are they responsible for the map of Europe that I saw the other day that would be the decolonized Europe where, like, uh, every ethnic group in Europe has their own country now? So it's basically like, you know, like what Germany looked like before it was a unified, like, you know, it was like 1,800 principalities and dukedoms and things like that. What it should have looked like after the Second World War. But yeah, no, I mean... (laughs) You know, his his whole thing is like he flies like Texas secessionists to Russia to give a speech. And maybe, I mean, he could possibly be under the impression that like California or Texas secessionism is like a a movement with more than 20 people behind it. But like it's kind of the equivalent of flying out like a like, I don't know, like a, a small discord channel out somewhere because it's like it's such a such little reach and such pop like little actual popularity among regular people that it sort of seems like a vanity project, but he's really into kind of any secessionist movement anywhere. Um, and, and I guess he, you know, he hosts conferences and, and, and things like that and then, uh, flies them around that, that seems to be really what he's charged with. Uh, I mean, that 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 he's like doing some sort of, uh, psyop on America and that it's going to lead to our dissolution. Yes. I mean, this is the thing. Black Hammer, the reason they've been pilloried for their many alleged crimes uh, is not because, you know, they are so crazy and that they're dress up. You know, Ghazi does sometimes dress up like the Joker and then parade around a bunch of people and uh, make vague threats against his enemies. Yes, uh, he is clearly one of the most insane gnome type people to kind of come out of America for a while. But. You know, there's a real, there's a lot of popular support behind Black Hammer, and given a couple more months, three, four, maybe at the at the most, um, we could actually be living in Black Hammer's America. No, I mean that's the crazy thing is all of these groups. I mean, African African People's Socialist Party, you know, Uhuru is the least marginal among these groups. They actually came out of the the black uh, the Black Power movement in the seventies. Um, they're also very weird. Black Hammer's kind of like an even weirder offshoot of them. Um, but Black Hammer had I think at this point, like 12 members. I mean, there a lot of people, including myself, kind of thought they were going to dissolve by last year. Guys, he's been recruiting homeless teenagers uh, from parks in Atlanta, which is, you know, I think a part of the reason for the very dark turn that the even darker turn that the organization has taken. But I mean, there, there, uh, you know, there is basically no non-marginal socialist uh, group. Although I don't know if Black Hammer, what they would call themselves, but, you know, like left wing group in America. And Black Hammer is probably the most marginal of all of them, besides maybe like the Red Guards of Austin or something like that. I would say Red Guards of Austin probably is significantly more members. Yes, than, absolutely. Than Black Hammer. Many of the but police he, officers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're penetrating. They're they're like they're finally getting a blue collar <laughs> working class people to join the movement. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but you mentioned it's like, it's like uh, Gazi, he, he, he joined the, um, the Uhuru movement. The, um, it was founded in the mid seventies in Florida by a guy named Omali Yeshatella, a former mm-hmm. convict. And it was like, you know, like any black radical organization, it was, you know, targeted by the feds, but it was also rumored to have been funded by entirely by a white woman named Penny Hess, who was the, yes. uh, she was the chairperson of the African People's Solidarity Committee, an organization of white people organizing in solidarity with the movement for the liberation of Africa and African people. Um, and then Ghazi was, uh, it was, I guess, put in charge of the Reparations Corps. So he mm-hmm. was given a group of white people who were, you know, funding the organization as a form of reparations. And I guess, like, that's how you lead to things like the, uh, the war zone stream. Yeah. <laughs> For for non named white people who are just you know, they want to they want to they want to support the institution but they don't want to be have names they just want to only have numbers and fund a revolutionary black organization. Yeah, I mean, actually, I think last year uh, Channel Five put out a video where they uh, uh, this dude Saddam um, goes to the reparations march, who's black, goes and from Africa goes to the rest of reparations march in Oakland, and uh, just asks all the white people marching if they can give him some money, and basically everyone's like, yeah, here's five dollars. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you are black and you do see one of these, uh, Uhuru movement, white people's marches going through your city, go up, you know, probably get about 40, $50 together from these people. But yes, Ghazi was in charge. Not only, I think he was also in charge of recruitment at one point. Um, there is an insane video of him sort of with this like semicircle of white people where he's just like ber- kind of berating them in this falsetto and like going through like what's your name like you know what, what's your background and all this kind of stuff um he is actually eventually expelled from the uhuru movement i have tried really hard to find out exactly why he was expelled um but the the political report from i think 2018 says the office of the secretary general is being enthusiastically assumed by comrade Ghazi. uh his fund and then they talk about his his what he's you know, his job's going to be his fundamental, his fundamental stumbling block at the moment is petty bourgeois subjectivism. And because of the scope of his office in the party, unchecked subjectivism can destroy the progress we make in every area of work. And so unfortunately, Ghazi's unchecked subjectivism <laughs> led to him being expelled from the movement and starting his own sort of like Gen Z millennial Uhuru movement. And that would be Black Hammer. That's what I list as my weakness on LinkedIn. Honestly, if there's anything I hate about myself, it's my unchecked subjectivism. Yeah. I, I, I want to... Um, so when Black Hammer first popped up, uh, I, I saw this video of, yeah, Ghazi berating the white people. And if I guess this is a good indication of how insane like 2018 was online. I remember someone saying, look, I think he's bad. I think the Anne Frank thing is bad. But he's one of the best organizers I've ever yes. seen. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. Secret reparations, man. They've given you a number and taken away your name. Well, well you know, that- yeah, it, it, you know, if you um, if your name was something like super offensive on Xbox Live, like, you know, just a racial slur, they would ex- Microsoft forcibly would change your name to like scared penguin or floppy pancake and then a bunch of numbers. And maybe that's the name that white people earned from the war zone streams. Yes. <laughs> is, you know, the numbers. funny thing is, is Ghazi's actual real name is Augustus Romaine, which is an incredible fucking thing to be named. Um, and he doesn't like, to, and I watched a video of him earlier today. He doesn't like to be called that um, because he says there's a lot of balls in that name, which I think I took to mean, uh, and by the other context of what he was saying, it's too masculine, which Ghazi also seems masculine to me. So I'm, I'm a little unclear on that. Uh, but it is, you know, he is very much like the singular leader of Black Hammer. Um, and, and it really grew up around him. Unlike the Uhuru movement, which does, you're, you're right, the Uhuru movement does seem to have been largely funded by a, an elderly white woman. Um, Ghazi sort of picked at first kind of like a multiracial uh any kind of college student, because college students were getting up some funky stuff in 2018. That was one of the funkiest years to be a college student. Because oh, yeah. People were really like learning a lot about politics. And uh, do you remember uh, Chief Su, Felix? Oh, my God. I loved her. I loved her. Um, I felt bad for her. You know, yes. um, 
Chief saw, if people don't remember, Korean American who posted like exclusively in AABE and, you know, posted that, those, that sort of like inflammatory, like, oh, if your dad was in the Navy Reserve on the weekends, he should be beheaded type stuff, mm. which like, yeah, sure, you know, but like <clears throat> Commander Ghazi type stuff, but from a Korean American perspective, people were, I thought, incredibly nasty to her. They found her normie post from like 2015 yes. when she was like a sophomore in college. And she was like, if you don't support John McCain to hell with you. Yes. Like, you know, <laughs> she's just like a boring, like talk Republican. But th- this was, it was a big time for like sort of amateurish, like college third worldism online. Yes. It's not like in the flesh space so much. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people didn't really know what to do with Black Hammer because that was sort of like, you know, there was a lot of confusion, I guess you could say, about uh, identity politics and stuff like that. And like, you know, there was kind of people didn't really know where to draw the line at it or whatever. And so it was like, well, I guess like what she's saying is is good. I mean, her whole thing that I think she was an adoptee from Korea um, to, to white parents. And I think it was like, she was sort of emblematic of, of these people who really took like almost to this, like as like a, a, a lifestyle in every part of their lives where she like denounced her parents, joined the most insane group that she could possibly join, became a rapper. And then I, I think she stayed on. She, I remember she was their chief science officer um, and she was a chemistry student at a college in North Carolina and appeared to post her homework and be like, these are new Black Hammer science discoveries, and like, we're, we're in the lab, and stuff like this. Um, <laughs> she was like Kim Philby. She yes. was stealing, <laughs> stealing information. <laughs> but yeah, it was, this was, if I remember anything about this time, yeah, it was a very goofy, very silly time online. And there was this ethos that, you know, in retrospect, was very infantilizing that people had, which is like, look, if somebody who's like Korean or Black or whatever says something that's kind of crazy, like Anne Frank is a Karen, or like, you know, if you go to a 4th of July barbecue, you should be castrated. You know, we know it's stupid, but like, don't say anything because you can't criticize anything they say. Yeah. Because their general perspective is right. They're going in the right direction. It's like, it's like they were acting as though they were looking at a kid finger finger painting like a vague shape, and the kid says it's a dog, and they're like, well, yeah, we just have to say it's a dog. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Brace, describe to the extent that like um, Black Hammer has an ideology, you described it as a crude mishmash of Jay Sakai's settlers, half Red Mao, and somewhat maybe also African socialists. But yeah. I mean, I'd be like, so like, like, yeah, how, how, like, just drill down deeper into that. Like, how, how have they, how have they, like, sort of melded together uh, Maoist third worldism and like the book Settlers by Jay Sakai? So to be clear, there is zero reference to the joint dictatorship or the proletariat of oppressed nations on their website. They make absolutely no reference to it. So we're talking about the crudest third worldism that can possibly be forged. Um, one doesn't get the impression that they're very well read. You know, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world or anything, but I, I know a thing or two about this kind of stuff. And so you know, I've, I've looked through, I haven't looked in a while, but I've looked through their like points of unity and stuff like that. Um, that, you know, they sort of claim to be Maoists, they, but they're also basically pro, uh, like, I don't know how to describe it, but like, they're not actually Maoists. I think they kind of just like Mao, but then they also don't like Mao sometimes. They hate Karl Marx. They say he's a colonizer. Um, their, their sort of mission statement read, Black Hammer Organization exists to take the land back for all colonized people worldwide. We're focused on building dual contending power of and for the colonized masses. Now, something, you know, long-time communist heads can remember is whenever someone starts talking about dual power, <laughs> they are just wasting time because they can't figure out how to actually explain themselves. Not that that doesn't exist as a concept or anything, but 99% of the time, that just means someone's treading water. Dual power is the communist equivalent of passive income. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> communist drop shipping. Yeah. yeah, it's it's when someone when someone's immediately busts out with the dual power thing, you're like, all right, I can tell that you don't fully have a grasp of what you're talking. I mean, like, about. okay, so like, to, just just to, just to like, I don't know, maybe uh, like like center this a little bit. What 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 do people think they're talking about when they say I'm I'm trying to build dual power? 
I, it depends on the context, but a lot of times people are like, well, if we just make like um, the people's NGO, that means that we can control the country. Um, it, I mean, it's, it, it really, it depends, I guess, on who you're talking about. But when anarchists talk about it, it means they're going to build a food, not bombs. And then, of course, we're going to have anarchy in America. When a lot of communists talk about it, it means that they're going to get together in one room, be as annoying as possible, and then they're going to take over America. Uh, when democratic socialists talk about it, they're talking about, well, we're going to, of course, donate to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and then we're going to take over America. Basically, it just means whatever, and this isn't what it actually means, but what it means when people say it is that they're going to find the most annoying thing to do and then do that for about six months until they succumb to their mental illness or get canceled. And then they're going to just go uh, finish college or, or, I don't know, just disappear into another place. That's what building dual power means when almost anybody I've ever heard says it. When Black Hammer says it, that means, this is actually is specifically what they mean, that they were going to build their own city in the mountains of Colorado. And from there, Hammer City would expand like, uh, you know, water blotting on a paper towel until it took over the until it was not only hammer city but hammer state hammer uh well i guess the highest thing up from state is country i guess hammer Nation, region. maybe <laughs> yeah and then hammer, we're then, hammer prefecture yes yeah yeah and then we would be the, the hammer nation and so they're really their goal from basically as far as i started paying attention to them was to raise money for funds to design and build a fully functional city uh, for Black Hammer members. They should have hired some of those guys that have all the emojis in their names and that like they're part of the NIMBY versus YIMBY thing. Yes. The guys, <laughs> the guys who, the guys who are named like, you know, Douglas, no more middle child tax France. Yeah. <laughs> the, the fact that the YIMBYs did not make a tactical alliance with Black Hammer <laughs> to build market rate housing <laughs> in Hammer City. Where, where okay, like, but like what they, they were trying to build Hammer City. This is on like a, like this is on like a state park or something. No, they they all right. So they raised actually a shit ton of money. Yeah. Um, not gonna say that I didn't contribute. You know, a couple thousand here or there, just so I don't have to play Warzone if they do win. Um, <laughs> but it's a bad game. Yeah, you know, just hedging my bets here. Uh, but, uh, they, uh, they raised a considerable amount of money, like tens of thousands. Like, I think it's like almost, I, this might be an exaggeration, but I think maybe even approaching a hundred thousand dollars, they say they purchase a plot of land in Colorado. They move out there and begin filming some of the strangest, you know, those like primitive construction videos you see on YouTube, like yeah. fake. Yeah. It was yeah. like... <laughs> It was like, like when a guys, guy like who, when guys in like Indonesia build like will build a pool with no drainage and it's just like it's obviously fake. Yeah. Um but it was I like I remember a, the videos it was them just sort of like standing on two by fours and just sort of like in this plot of land just being like just sort of like there was like very limited construction material but they were just sort of like milling around looking at it things like that. It's like if you, if you hired two uh, highly neurodivergent people to build the set of Deadwood. Like it was like people <laughs> just like putting planks on the ground, and like I don't think anything actually like they they I, I don't listen. I'm not a builder, right? Like I'm not you know I've never worked construction or anything like that. I do know though that almost all buildings have what's called a foundation, like under the ground, and also pipes and things like that. Like so, well, you man. know. Uh, Plumbing, you know, uh, electricity, all the they put, they put so much stuff under a house. You know, it's not just built flat on the ground. Um, that did not appear to be what was uh, being built. And then the sheriff came and, uh, well, the, the, the people, the masses of America learned that uh, from a press release from the sheriff's department that they had escorted several squatters off of a piece of land because those squatters had not actually filed any paperwork to actually purchase the land from the owner of it and uh, also clearly had no building permits or anything like that. And so they, um, they just didn't actually buy it. They just talked to a guy about buying this plot of land in Colorado. And uh, then they were kicked off because they were trespassing. 
I always thought that was weird. Like the fact that they didn't buy the building. Right. Yeah. I wonder, I, and I was trying to figure it out if like the guy that they talked to was like, you know, we talked about it being a very confused time was like a sort of guilty liberal guy. And Ghazi just gave his usual spiel. And this guy like, enthusiastically nodded along like oh that sounds great like a separate city for all oppressed people and the white people playing war zone yeah no um it's really cool what you guys are doing but like they never signed any papers or anything yeah. and if Ghazi just took that to mean that he owned the land now it was always i never knew what happened there because even like yeah black hammer was a scam and a cult and everything but it, it is like well you presumably they must have thought that they had some right to it if they were trying to build mm -hmm. their two by four city. Well, I can't remember the guy's name, but one member was uh, sort of took the blame from this from Ghazi and Ghazi. Ex uh, I don't I probably pronounce this wrong. Exorciated him on a live stream uh, <laughs> by being like, you know, comrade, you know, alligator for, <laughs> Did forget to file some paperwork here, and he is the reason that things did not work out. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Like, sort of passive aggressively, um, and then occasionally very aggressively uh, digging into one of his chiefs, because that was what you were called if you were sort of a a uh, team leader in the Black Hammer organization for actually not not getting something notarized, and then you know. Fucking up the land purchase, essentially. I mean, by buying property is a real pain in the ass. I mean, there's like a shitload of paperwork you have to do. I, I, it, I, it's to me a renting's difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need you need to show um uh like income well into the next century to rent an apartment in New York now. Exactly, and it's like cool. I don't know how I'm supposed to get a tape measure that's 500 meters, but like. I can look on Google Maps and yeah, I'm far from the school. I don't think it's like a problem for me to live here. <laughs> I guess I guess this is how we find out that either in Reparations Corps or Main Hammer, there was no like Chief Greenberg. There was no, no like <laughs> college student who was going there for finance or like getting his MBA or anything. I mean, like outside the the aborted um, city project, uh, the Sim City 2000. You know, I mean, like you always get plagued with some sort of disaster you cannot you cannot cut funding on two by fours you will regret mm. this <laughs> chief alligator but i mean like i guess the most famous thing they're known for is is the Anne frank colonizer rant but i want to get back to this idea about like like the, the mission statement is that like you know we are decolonizing the world for like the the colonized masses like and then the whole jay sakai settlers thing like what is what does like decolonization mean to them like as as, a, as like a sort of the main tentpole of the reason for this organization existing or their, their mission statement? Well, I genuinely have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Because to me, I mean, if they're, they're all about action, here's another word some of the most annoying people in the universe say with abandon. Praxis. Um, and, you know, Black Hammer's organization is nothing but uh, not, all oh, constantly engaging in praxis. And that seems to be renting different houses in the uh, Atlanta metro area. To me, I guess decolonization in, in a lot for a lot of people, um, I guess, who, who really started using that that term in the it's past. It's become like, a term years. that's like really like it's, it's become like accelerated in the usage of, and like, yeah. I guess misusage of it just over the last year or two. It's like it's like it's just sort of like a like a, a, a more hardcore version of like earlier forms of, I guess, like. I don't know, anti-racist or anti-imperialist uh, like thought or action or something like that. Now it's like everything is like, are you a colonizer or not? Like, you know, are you a settler? Like, you know, yeah. you know what, what is, are, you, are, are we decolonizing something or are we colonizing it? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, frankly, in this context, uh, what, what they're talking about. And frank, frankly, I don't know what most people that are fucking talking about when they talk about it because... A lot of the times, I think this is where things get confusing. A lot of people learn sort of left-wing lingo, I guess you could say, and slogans. They sort of learn it f from just like context clues when it's used by some of the most insane human beings to come out of the 21st century. And so these ideas kind of gain like a, a sort of warped currency in, in people's brains. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of, you know, de decolonization has meant a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts. What a lot of people mean when they use it, when they're talking about America, is 
I, I actually still don't know because sometimes it's in relationship to Native Americans um, and sometimes it's in relationship to black people. Um, but, but when you actually get down to the specifics of what a lot of people mean, I, I, I frankly, um, I don't know. Uh, and I, I think to me, it's often a sign, you know, if someone's using it a lot, a sign of, of, of what you might call ultra leftism. Um, yeah. And uh, I mean, frankly, anything that makes America dumber, I'm for. So I'm for it. I'm for everybody basically adopting every other sentence. Uh, I mean, I guess like, I mean, like, there's a dynamic that like I, I've noticed, like, I mean, from very early on of like interacting with like uh, just sort of like le a left wing ideology or socialism or communism, whatever you want to call it on the Internet. If you come to it like through the Internet, I think like people, especially if you're kind of like unsure of yourself or like not very well read or you feel like maybe you don't know everything or like you, you feel guilty in some way for, like, you know, past instances of being a liberal or uh, voting for the Democratic Party. I think, like, it's very easy to fall prey to people who seem very confident and are yeah. very confidently more left-wing than you. Yes. And there's always going to be, like, an arms race to stake out, like, an ever more left-wing point of view and then use it to hold it over the heads of people who you're trying to, like, berate into giving you money or following you or, you know, retweeting you or whatever. Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of just get lost in the sauce and they're like, well... I, this is, seems like the most extreme position I could possibly take. Because uh, sometimes people mean like white people should go back to Europe. Sometimes people just mean it thinks it means like increased sovereignty to, you know, Native Americans, things like that. It's 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 it really depends on who's, you know, who's who's saying it a lot of the times. And obviously that goes with all of these terms. And to me, like, I mean, it, it seems like a very basic sort of sociological pronouncement, but like. I think people are attracted to, I guess, just the most, um, I don't know, left wing position they, they can hold because it, yeah, it becomes like this sort of internet arms race for, for who can, who can be the most radical because there's no actual stakes involved. In fact, you lessen the stakes for a lot of people. If you're just like, well, I believe in, you know, I think that we should, uh, nuke Florida. It's like, well, you, okay, you could, that, that's such an easy position to hold because there's no, there, you'll never get a chance to do it. And so, and it's not, yeah, I, 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 I fully agree. And that, you know, that, that allows people like Ghazi to really actually get some room um, when I think any kind of regular person looking at this or anyone who's not like deciding to become like some online communist person would be like, this is some of the craziest bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I mean, two seconds of watching one of Ghazi's videos, and you're like, oh, this is just an actual insane person. But, I, you know, people, especially in like 2018, 2019, and then, of course, 2020, people were really just like uh, leaning into being as insane as possible. Well, I've, I've, I've always really liked the idea about just like every white person in America returning to Europe. And then the question is, like, well, which European country? And I would just, because, like, like, most American white people just say they're Irish. So I love the idea of 200 million people just moving to Ireland. Ireland immediately gets a population transfer of, like, uh, between 100 and 200 million Americans, based on, like, how many people celebrate St. Patrick's Day in this country. Well, Will, where, where would you be going? Oh, Ireland, obviously. I'd be, I'd be on the reverse coffin ships going to Dublin <laughs> from New York. Matt, where would you be going? Uh, I don't even know. Somewhere in Northern Europe. I can see that. Felix. Well, I would, I would be pointing to my last name and I'd be going Germany, Germany, J G E R M A N A Y. Oh, Germany, Germany, not Ukraine, not Ukraine, not Ukraine, not Ukrainian, not Ukrainian Jewish, not half my family or more. No way. No, not from that part of the world. Nope. No, I had no relatives from there. No, we did not ignore half the family tree or more. Germany, Deutschland. Yeah, I think I, I think I would have to either go to, uh, I think France or Ukraine, which to me I just would would no really like to avoid both of those places. I, I would I would rather live in a war zone playing dungeon than go back to Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going there. Fuck that. No, I'm not going to Ukraine or Russia. I'm not going to any of those places. I will never. You're not sending me to a place where they use Cyrillic. It's not happening. I can't read it. It's stupid. There are so many circles. Half the language is just O's that you put different lines through. Oh, check this out. You see this letter R? Well, what if I told you it actually is a totally different letter in this language? Yeah, no. Okay, enjoy. Uh, here, here at snack time, uh, eat your favorite thing.
thing. Lay's Krabap. Oh, all those podcasts where you guys maybe didn't exactly support Ukraine. Now you have to be in the army here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even if it wasn't, you know, even if like they weren't at war. No. No, I've been not there. going to any of those places. No, I, ha- I had a good time when I was there. Got to say, wouldn't want to live there. I wouldn't would, want to live there. The only one of the cabbage countries I would even consider living <laughs> the in. Cabbage countries. <laughs> the only one I, I would even like gun to my head. It's this or die. I'm like, OK, is Poland because it's enough like a regular. Co- I mean, it's still fucked up, but it's like enough like a regular country and they use letters i recognize even though they're a little too crazy with the z's don't think z is supposed to be in that many words guys well you know how when people are like you can go if you went back in time like when would you go and people like i'd go to the roman era like i go to the fucking 1800s and invent the machine gun or something if you go to (laughs) poland right now you can actually do have the opportunity to do that you'd be like check this out what if we had a computer that was actually not connected to the wall it's called a laptop and i own a company called apple and we are going to start building them here. And you would just describe, like, check this out. It's like a, it's like an airplane, but it has rotors on the top, and it, it lifts up vertically. I'm going to call it a helicopter, the bracecopter. But we have to invent it here. And so you could really, I mean, you could invent like writing, um, books. You could probably, you know, you could be like, check this out. This is Islam. I came up with this. You guys are going to fucking love this over here. It's like Christianity, but simplified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually the third and final one. So <laughs> yeah. you guys are going to love this one. Because you guys uh, don't like the Jews. You guys like being Christians. But that means the third one, best one. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I, I, I just, I would be looking forward to my new life in Germany. The only problem with Germany is I think I could get prosecuted under hate speech laws there for easily. things that I post every day. Yeah, easily. Uh, real quick, though, if you could time travel to any period of the uh, past, what would it be? Where would you go, Brace? 100%. About 2022, or no, about 19,000 and like 90-something years ago. And I would go when he's trying to get out of that fucking cave because those Roman soldiers are like napping or whatever. Mm-hmm. I would take the AK-47 that I invented in Roman times and showed them how to mass produce. And I would just... <laughs> Wait, you, would, you would kill Jesus Christ after he was resurrected? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Just right, just right before of- any of the followers saw him, you would just yeah. dead Christianity before it even started? Yes, yes. And then I'd be like, check this out, you guys... You got race uh, is the real assassin 33 AD. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> check this out. Uh, have you guys heard of Jay Sakai? And then I would <laughs> teach the Romans about, you know, settlers. And they would, they would, I mean, I could change, I could change the entire course of history. I like the idea that God brought Jesus back after he was crucified, but then you shoot him and God's like, well, fuck, they're not supposed to have guns. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't come up with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Matt, yeah, where well, would that, you go that's, in the past? That's, that's practical monotheism that you only have one in you. You only have one yeah. revive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I would like to go to one of those like uh, megalithic structures from the hunter gatherer era when everyone would like eat mushrooms and uh, invent gods. I think that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Felix, do you have do you have a historical period you'd like to check out? Um, mine's pretty simple. I would go to Columbine and uh, prevent it with gun kata. and become <laughs> the biggest cele- that's good. biggest, and then warn the yeah. world about nine eleven and save the world. That's pretty good. Will, what about you? Uh, it would either be um, you know, the Roaring Twenties when you could purchase cocaine and heroin over the counter, and or just like a me when I was in college and I would just be like, stop being such a pussy. Yeah. Oh, you know what? 1890s. Baby Hitler's just being born. <laughs> and I performed the most Brooklyn style circumcision on him <laughs> that you could <laughs> ever give any. Because you know how there's the theory that he had syphilis? Mm. Yeah. yeah. I could, it's because I gave it to him. <laughs> in, the, in the most vicious fellatio ever performed <laughs> by a moil. <laughs> He's gone before his 15th birthday. Uh, okay. Uh, Black Hammer. Sorry, just, just really though, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, 
could, could you explain? I, I've, I've been trying to like, I've been hinting at this, but like, could you explain J. Sakai's Settlers to me? What is this book? And like, what, what like, I, I keep seeing it cited. I keep seeing people either make fun of it or uphold it as, you know, praxis. But what the, what, what, who is J. Sakai and what is his book, Settlers? I've actually never read it. Okay. <laughs> me, neither. I mean, me either. But, you know, uh, it's not hard to get grasp the vibe. It's basically that you can't apply a class analysis to America because the American white working class uh, will always be allied to capital because uh, they jointly exploit, along with uh, the ruling class, uh, the uh, oppressed peoples of America and then the world. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that, like, I remember it was really it, it kind of like ebbs and flows in popularity. Um, and I've, I've always kind of meant to read it, but it's always just been like, well, why wouldn't I just read any other book written uh, <laughs> since the advent of the written word? Um, and, and my main reason for that is if only insane, annoying people like something, and this is maybe a, not the most intellectual heuristic, but like it's, it's almost always served me right. If only an insane, annoying people like something and tell me to read it, there's absolutely no way in hell that I'm going to read it. And also, uh, it's just an excuse to not do anything. I mean, yes. the, the reason to read Settlers is so that you can be like, oh, yeah, America cans are irredeemable Nazis. Therefore, there's no reason to uh, pursue any political agenda of any kind. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm sure it's fine to read and I'm sure that it's, you know, if you're not crazy. Unfortunately, a lot of left wing people are just insane. And so if they read anything that gives them an excuse to be more insane, they just go more insane. I, I know I, it, it's it's I'm sure that, you know, I, if I read it, I could gain something valuable from it. But frankly, there's a lot of other probably much more valuable things to learn out there. Do, are you trying to teach me that America is racist and it's hard sometimes for white people uh, to get along with national minorities or, or to, to even if they have the same class interests many times oppose you know, I, this is this is the history of the 20th, you know, 19th, 18th centuries. Of course, anybody with a cursory knowledge of history knows the basics of this and can glean the most, you know, the, the obvious lessons from it. Yeah, you know, but it, only in Settlers will you get uh, terms like white surprise. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's that, that's from the book. that's the graph that I that I saw. Much to their much to their white surprise, America lost Vietnam, and yeah. you know with their yeah. surprise in every box of Cracker Jacks, and he's talking about you know the Vietnam War Memorial or something. Well, and, I mean, you know, yeah. and marble. And I got to give the guy credit. And this is another interesting thing about the book is that like it's a the guy who wrote it like the name yeah. is a fucking you uh, a pseudonym. No one fucking knows who actually wrote it. A number of people think it's like an FBI agent or something. Uh, but great pro stylist because and also accurate. Mm -hmm make fun of the white surprise thing but i know for myself if i'm ever startled i often will let out three very high-pitched sort of yelps yeah and that's white surprise <laughs> yeah so i know it exists because i have it i mean my, my my thing with this is like you know at least he writes interesting because i have i have read portions of it as well and i'm like at least he writes in the way that like I can understand because he says things like, yeah, like white surprise, but like, yeah, nobody knows who the guy is uh, in his biography that he proffers. He does say that he worked for a number of years for a Jewish family. Hmm. You know, hmm. Full reveal. That was my family. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, Jay, Jay Sakai did work for me as sort of like a Leon, the professional type bodyguard for <laughs> se several years. Um, the thing is, there's a, there's a, you always see these people be like, is it like kind of debate the merits of reading theory? And I think for a lot of people, that's actually, you're starting with the boards of the house and you're not starting with the foundation. Mm -hmm. The foundation to all that is you should try to exist for one month as a normal person who is not subject to like the greatest, uh, you know, uh, like excesses of narcissism or like, um, personal, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but let's say problems that many people on the left exhibit where interpersonal problems. And so it's just, just be normal and like a, a pleasant human being for one month. And then every month that you do that, you should be allowed to read a book. And during that month, you can't engage any political activity or, or come up with any opinions or anything. 
after you finish that month and you're graded by like a troika, then you can read one thing. And then <laughs> after that, another month off while well, you learn how to be a normal person. And then you can read another thing. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, well, Brace, you're, I think you're borrowing from what I think is the most useful uh, area of Black Hammer thought, which is um, ruthless, ruthless self criticism sessions. Yes. And like sort of punishment and revolutionary discipline. Because, like I said, like, let's say, okay, you, 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 you're, you're, you're tasked by the Troika to um, just be a normal, pleasant person for a month. And your reward, if you, if, you, if you complete that task of revolutionary discipline, is you can read one work of theory. But yes. if you screw up, I think you should be made to read one book by Dave Barry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like, you know, nice, nice sort of like a, like a dad sort of bathroom book, you know? Just as a, I, uh, sort of pleasant, pleasant musings on reality from an aggrieved uh, comedian. <laughs> Writing a letter to police and I'm being forced to read a PJ or work memoir. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so Black Hammer's Black Hammer's criticism, self criticism sessions. And you know, I I have been in many criticism, self criticism sessions in my lifetime. I have found that to be valuable, especially in certain contexts. Um, one thing that would not have been valuable was to do it in the form of a camera facing live stream, <laughs> where a uh, barbaric gnome calls me up to the front and tells me dresses me down in front of everybody and i have to say land back after i say every anything that i say um gazi you know G gazi ran black hammer i mean it was gazi was black hammer all the other people at the top all the other chiefs were just who could be also sick si both sycophantic which everybody had to be but also the most insane uh, and the most kind of gauzy like, and so they would have chief. Oh, the guy, chief alligator. I actually have my notes here in front of me from, from when I, when I really got into this it was named chief Anko. And I remember, I don't actually know if it was chief Anko, uh, but it was one of the guys in a chief Anko like position. I remember how it was epileptic and Gazi clearly forced him to have a seizure during a criticism, self criticism live stream. And I remember watching it being like, this is, you know, I, uh, there's many debates on the merit of calling the police on someone and saying that they have a hostage in their house. You know, it's, is it good? Is it bad to do? You know, kind of unsettled. I was like, maybe someone should do that here because this seems like you're just torturing this person, whether they're having a actual seizure or not. It was just insane. I mean, one of the things that, that they did, I think we, we need to talk about, was Operation Storm of White Tears. <laughs> yes. Hell yes. Um, which is tough for me to talk about because I had, I mean, I, I had a cousin killed in Operation Storm of White Tears. You know, uh, my wedding was bombed during that. <laughs> um, so a document was leaked called Operation Storm of White Tears, uh, which is the goal that says, manufacture a controversy around Black Hammer to popularize our narrative. By quote, emotionalizing an old poster video, we laid down a political line we've already united around, meaning we control the flow of the narrative and we get the masses to deepen the engagement with our brand. So, what that means is, and I, believe me, this is, I know this intrinsically, be as annoying and insane as possible to get people to pay attention to you, with the ostensible reason of people uh, viewing and agreeing with your politics. This has been I, the goal of many people on the left in the past six yeah. years. <laughs> but only Black Hammer was smart enough to actually write it down. Well, you know, you I mean, know, like, something to it. Use the resources at hand, and like being annoying is really all most Americans have as like a skill or resource. Yeah. So, the phase one, they have known hot takes: Anne Frank incident; B. Gazi speaking to Kimya about the failure of feminism as a theory, date unknown; C. Alex argues with a sex worker over Pornhub; known causes for health sympathy, health issues, inspirational past and identity. Then phase two is hook the masses, and then phase three, destroy the competition. So that was another thing that they did, was when they went to Atlanta, they declared war on PSL, the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and followed PSL around at any sort of public event that they would have, and like call them racist, throw things at them. Like we basically, there'd be like a protest of 20 people, and then Black Hammer would bring 12 people and counter protest not the actual issue they were protesting against, but the people themselves, um, which I do not believe was very successful. 
Um, you you brought up the uh, the the, the Pornhub thing. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't in like in, in his long trove of like uh, publishing videos of himself online, wasn't another thing Commander Gazi used to do, pr- like pre Black Hammer days, would just be like to do videos listing his favorite porn stars? Yeah, yeah. Gazi, <laughs> so who, who are we talking here? Yeah, yeah. Well, What's his ranking? <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking know any of them. Um, yeah, I, it's Gazi. The, the the Black Hammer line on um, on porn. I don't know what they mean by Alex argues with a sex worker over Pornhub because Black Hammer of the articles they published on their 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 website, there's like they're kind of doing like OnlyFans activism and like they're very like pro porn actor or whatever, which seems to be one of one of Ghazi's sort of personal pet issues that became a party line. Well, I mean, like, but like, I guess like pre this, um, you know. M- alleged murder that took place at uh, the home they were living in and now the revelation that uh you know they were as part of some sort of like you know russian uh, you know influence campaign or whatever which yeah. is like i mean who cares i mean like like as as we said like at the beginning of the show it's just like the the idea that like any of this shit was going to catch on is pretty hilarious but like they 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 did take like i guess like a distinctly more I don't know, right wing cast of their activism. Like, I mean, they were protesting in front of the uh, Facebook headquarters for stealing the election from Donald Trump. And, you know, like they've, they've taken like, a, they've sort of like, a, uh, like you know, talked up alliances with the Proud Boys and Ghazi mm-hmm. went on Gavin McGinnis's show. I mean, like, is this just, is this just like that. trying to find like, a, like, like the, the next curve, you know, like the, the next groove at like the outermost like edge that you can inhabit and then hoard over other people? This is maybe unfair to say, but do you, do you remember how many different phases that the mainstream, I guess, left went through in the past five years? Like a different, oh remember God. when there was like the ice occupations and then like four months later, that might have well just never happened. You know what I mean? Like nothing, nothing changed or anything, but they just you kind of move on to like the new thing. That is, uh, that is sort of how I view this as well. Like Black Hammer, you know, they faced some difficulties. They had a lot of members leaving due to Gazi, like abusing them physically, mentally, and spiritually, uh, and sexually. And so I think they were kind of just looking for new ways to get attention. And they did, yeah, they did this new alliance with the Proud Boys, whatever that means. I mean, one of the, one of the, an incredible hookup, I gotta say. Like, I mean, just two of the most childlike, I guess, organizations that you could possibly join, joining forces. I haven't watched the Ghazi, um, Gavin McGinnis interview, but that's a, I should do that right after this. I think they sort of took this rightward stance where they were trying to kind of like, they were trying to kind of walk the fence by being like, COVID's real, but the vaccine's fake. Um, and at first they were like, there's not enough vaccine and they sort of switched lines on that. And I think it was sort of like, you see this with a lot of people where they're like, well, a lot of regular Americans like kind of right wing or whatever views. I mean, not necessarily with the vaccine or whatever, just in general. And they're like, they kind of engage in this like leftist tailism of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so Ghazi was trying to do that, but Ghazi unfortunately is ham- hamstrung by being a just deranged little fella i mean he's he's one of those guys you're so short you're like oh you don't have as much brain as people (laughs) because yeah your head's small as fuck like you just physically can't you're missing a couple parts that 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 thing of like chasing american like baseline reactionary opinion all that is is just like trying to appear normal right yes like you're 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 chasing after like the baseline regular uh, conservativeness of your average American in an attempt that hypothetically there's the perfect like blue collar normal guy out there. And you are the first like communist, anti-imperialist, whatever, who he's ever talked to, who seems normal. That is a fantasy because the thing that is making you not normal is not, you know, ultra leftism or id poll or like communism or whatever. It's the fact that you care about politics, that yeah. you are already a weird fucking leper by the virtue of how politically engaged you are, not your specific beliefs. You are already coming off like a freak because that is the type of person you are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's clear, too, from like, because so they actually they, they didn't fa- they didn't protest I mean, the, Facebook. The, the, the fucking Democratic Party is trying to do that, too. But uh, was it popularism? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's, we it's love, the exact we love same beliefs. thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, Gazi is just Matt Iglesias, but shorter and a different kind of weird looking. Like, and and well, like, and also way more, way more interesting. Yeah. Way oh, more 100%. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Although, if I would pay so much Hammer City uh, ruble to see those two fuck, <laughs> uh, just all out. I mean, so. Uh, you know, you can really see this in, you know, one of the things that's named in the FBI indictment um, is that they were given funds by Ionov to fly to California to go protest in front of Meta's headquarters. Um, and it's pretty clear once you actually look at videos of it that like, OK, this does seem like it was maybe funded by Ionov because they're holding Russia. There's three of them. Ghazi, of course, included there, and and Kendo, one of his second in commands, was also charged with many of the same charges uh, that Ghazi was stemming out of the the, the Atlanta raid. Um, they have a Russian flag, sort of like around there, like worn like a cape, um, which is a classic insane person way to have a flag. Um, they have a sign that says "Stop segregating Russian peoples." That mirrors exactly just a meme that Ionov made and posted on his own Facebook page, and uh, some other, like I think, just a bullhorn. And the, the, the protests ostensibly revolved around silencing Russian voices on Facebook in the aftermath of uh, the beginning of the Ukraine war. I don't think you could find any worse representatives of free speech than Ghazi. Because when I look at him, I'm like, you know what? Maybe they just, we should, there should be like, you have to pay $10 billion to get on, on social media. Like, it shouldn't be something that you can just get on for free um oh, so i always going back a little bit to the proud boys link up something that i do find interesting about that one is that it's such an odd couple pairing because one is uh what is a russian not a russian government project but you know associated with an actor of the russian government the other is an fbi project yeah I mean, all of like the proud boys leadership all seem to be like fucking fbi informants yeah, no, exactly. And the thing is, too, it's like there's a difference between being like, you know, con like I don't think that the FSB started Black Hammer. No, that's like ridiculous. That. Obviously not. Um, and I don't even think Ionov is like an FSB agent. I think Ionov probably himself is just like an asset, probably a willing, I mean, and you know, knowing asset, but like he's likely an asset of Russian intelligence if you look at the guy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, it's like this is... The, these are it's some of the dumbest waste of money I've ever seen in my life because Black Hammer is a literally I mean, we are talking about at most, including online members, 40 people in the entire United States of America and of people who are actually involved on the ground, something like oh, slightly over a dozen, including several homeless teenagers that Ghazi has somewhat kidnapped. Um, yeah, I mean, like, aren't half these people just like locked in dog cages half of the time? <laughs> like, well, this is, so I mean, th this is there's a lot of kind of nasty stuff coming out on the aftermath of that raid. You know, Ghazi, of course, has actually been charged with rape, right? Like, mm -hmm. or poor sodomy. You know, I've read things that sort of are alleging that that Ghazi, you know, raped people at gunpoint. You know, that he was that he was sort of had turned. Black Hammer into essentially what's you know not an uncommon thing for sort of small time tyrants like him turned into a, basically like a, his own sort of uh, sexual I guess playground I don't know how to describe it um, and you know giving this guy money there is no possible you know I don't I don't claim to know what the Russian government are thinking right I you know I'm sure there are many factors to take in. There is absolutely no way that you can justify that expenditure of even two thousand dollars on Black Hammer, um, except if you're trying to make America look annoying. <laughs> In which case, it's worth mission accomplished. I think. Yes. I, I think um, Ionov is like he's like the equivalent of like a uh, Voice of America producer. I mean, yeah. uh, America does have guys like this too, but. It seems like a lot of the Russian way of doing things is to give like a weird guy from your country like walking around money and just yeah. go like here, like give seed money to the most annoying people you can find. Well, it's like it's the Russian equivalent of Globo Homo, which is just Globo Moron. Like just like find the dumbest guy from every country. Give him 
give him like 50, 60 bucks. See what he does with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Globo moron. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, so like, I, I guess to, to wrap things up here on the, the, the Black Hammer tip, is, is Gazi going away? I mean, so another thing that I've kind of been considering in the aftermath of this, I'm like, well, this indictment, I mean, obviously, you know, these cases take a long time to put together. It's also a bullshit case because Ionov lives in Russia. He's not like, it's not like they're getting a guy out of like, you know, Embassy Row of D.C. You know, I, 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 Ghazi has such low character and such a piece of shit that there's almost no way that he doesn't flip. Right. And turn state's evidence against Ionov or anybody else. I mean, he's sort of the top of the food chain for Black Hammer. There's, you know, he's the guy who shot, called the shots from the beginning. Um, but with Ionov, you get into, you know, sort of a realm above that. And there is no doubt in my mind that Ghazi's wheeling and dealing as he always has. Are there any, uh, do, did we learn anything? Are, are there any lessons here to be applied to the, uh, the broader political left here? Or is it just if you're going to be. If you're going to self-criticize, don't do it on a live stream. And Warzone well, is kind of a shitty game. Is that what we've learned? <laughs> I, think, I think there kind of is something to learn, which is like, I, I think the U.S. left is um, extraordinarily weird. I mean, the left in many places is pretty weird. But a, a second only, I mean, Germany is maybe weirder. But yeah. that's just because of the, the nature of, of, the, of, the, of the Deutschmann. But... Amer the American left is very weird, and there's a lot of strange passages you can you can go down. And you know, I I I have I you know I have politics that I've I've thought about for you know many years. And I think what's what's sort of kept me from going down the weirder paths here are well, not only am I normal, but I've kept that as my guiding light above everything else. Is be normal, like don't be so fucking weird and crazy. Just be normal. And I think for a lot of people, their idealism should really be just every, not idealism, everything should be superseded by the overriding principle of be normal. And if you keep that at the front of your head at all times, then that can prevent you from being Chief Saw. And her rap career now dead in the water. Um, you know, I, if you are listening out there, me and a bunch of my friends would like to get together and maybe crowdfund you, kickstart you, something like that. But just just be normal. Don't be fucking weird. Um, and and really take that that to heart. And also the idea that like like being weird or seeming to be like uh, rejected or find, if when people find you off putting, it's not that's not revolutionary radical praxis. They're not finding you weird and off putting because your politics upset them. It's just like it it, it shouldn't be an arms race to uh, alienate yourself from more and more of your fellow human beings. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think that um, Brandon's inauguration has maybe driven as many people in, insane as Trump's did, just in a different way. Because it's kind of, it's relegated, being on the left in America is back to being like a thing that's for losers, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people, uh, people who maybe it turned out they were more joiners than true believers uh, in the past year or so have gone, oh, my God, what the fuck did I spend the last, you know, four or five years of my life doing and have since gone down like a very weird direction. But, you know, um, I guess this is this is maybe contradictory to the first point, but they are acting weird because they are trying to force their not normal brains. To yeah. Be normal. Yeah. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. Liz, Liz calls people like that radical swing voters. Which yeah. is is true. Like you see a lot of people. I mean, that's like so. A lot of people get really into like leftism with a capital L during mm -hmm. uh, you know the Trump years, and now you kind of got to swing the other way because you know you're a swing voter. That's what you do. You re-register as like a, I don't know. Now you're a, a populist. I, that's the that's that's another short word for someone's about to be as annoying as a human being can be to you. <laughs> it doesn't feel good to be a loser. Yet, by virtue of caring about politics in America, you are a loser. So you might as well, you know, you might as well, you know, you're, it's already raining. What can I say? <laughs> All 
All right. Well, I think we should uh, wrap it up there. Uh, Brace, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. I mean, you know, if you listen to this show, you already you already you already fucking chewing on probably. But uh, Brace, do you, you have any other any any further pronouncements or things to plug? Or if people want more Brace Bell, then where should they go? Well, here's the thing. Don't let Black Hammer turn you off from third worldism. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brace. Thanks again. Oh, us. oh, we have a tour, uh, which okay. actually, you know, I can't remember any details about it, but, you know, you can figure it out if you want to go. You already know where Chunan is. You know where to find yeah. Chunan. And uh, all right. Well, actually, we have an upcoming tour, so I have some uh, announcements related to that. Uh, this is just a quick update on our upcoming Fort Lauderdale date. Due to sudden unavoidable, unavoidable scheduling conflict from the venue, we're moving our Miami Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale date at Revolution from Saturday, October 29th to Sunday, October 30th. So just a one-day difference. All already purchased tickets will be honored as well as any refunds needed. All other dates remain the same. Go to chopotraphouse.com for dates and ticket links. Um, another reminder that if you can't make our shows in Portland this week, you can stream our Pickathon live stream over Frequency this Saturday. There will be a special link to purchase tickets that uh, tickets for that stream in the episode description here. And finally, we have a special request from friend of the show, Jackie Wagner from Yeah But Still Pod. He is working on a new podcast about the paranormal. He is trying to cast a wide net to find anybody with personal stories of the strange. You know what I'm talking about. Ghosts, aliens, cryptids, spirits, mysticism, anything unexplainable or downright weird. So if you or anyone you know have a story you find unexplainable and would like to anonymously be part of the project, you can email Jack at stories at otherworldpod.com. Once again, that email is stories at otherworldpod.com. Dot com. So that uh, does it for today's episode. We will see you in Portland this week.